Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is a bit different. You know, I've been working on the 69 Mach 1 project and this week I haven't been able to get a whole lot done. I had some other stuff I had to deal with. I ran out of welding gas yesterday when I was putting in the Detroit Speed mini tub on the passenger side and it's just been an off week. So, one of the ideas that I had was to do kind of a retro series. I've been thinking about this for a while. And you know, on this channel alone, I have like 1,100 videos. And on my other channel, called Joe Daddy's Workshop, I have a bunch of other videos as well, but those are more about working on your lawnmower, or your house, or doing something that's not necessarily car related. So if you're interested, check out that channel as well. Now the idea with this video is I'm going to take some of my older videos that I made and put them together to make it a more beneficial kind of series. Uh, you know, I've been doing these things and I used to film with a little tiny camera and I didn't have good quality uh, editing software or anything like that, but I tried to do the best I could with what I had. So this is going to be a throwback series. It will either be uh, like a Flashback Friday or maybe a retro series or something like that, but it also introduces people to my channel or to my videos that they may not have seen before. There's a lot of them out there, and if YouTube is not feeding those videos, nobody knows they exist. So this is the first video in this format or this series. So have a look and enjoy. All right, gang. Here's the latest project that's come to the shop. Now, you know I've been working on the 68 Mustang, and that's going to take a standstill for a little bit while I work on this. Now, this is a 65 Mustang V8 automatic car with a factory bench seat which is pretty strange you don't see those in fact I've never seen actually seen one um, assembled and I still haven't because the seats not in this car however I'm gonna be going through this car um, as you can see it was started to be worked on and it became complicated um, this car has some pretty bad rust issues and the owner did his best to try to take care of these things but as he got deeper into it he realized that he may be in over his head and he needed some help so needless to say I'm gonna put two full quarters on it and that's one of the easy parts um, the doors and fenders are all usable suspensions okay got a little bit of rust issues up here in a core support which that's an easy fix can replace those um, I did a Mustang in the past that had some rust issues on this rail and as you can see when I open the hood here it's got even more problems right there but all that's fixable um, the good part is the shock towers and even this apron areas are all in good shape unfortunately there's that on the cowl on that side and that on a cowl on this side so we'll get to that in a minute but otherwise everything uh, up front as far as the main structure is good now the, the owner also had done some work on the inside and um, he did replace floor pans and do some work in here and new seat risers and did some other work and that's that's good but this car needs a, needs a little bit more than that. Um, as he, as we looked into it a little further, and this this is a big concern. I don't know if you can see this very well. That's what's left of the frame rail, where the spring mounts, and uh, it's got similar issues on that side, only not quite as obvious. However, um, knowing that and knowing what it takes to replace just the frame rail and you can even see there it's all the way through um, knowing what it takes to do all that it's we're better off putting a whole one piece floor pan in it so that's the plan um, I'm going to cut out all this all the way up into the floor support boxes that wrap around the frame up front as, as I showed in the other videos with the 68 going to pull all that out and put it in one piece pan and that will remedy everything so 
along with that, as you can see, I'm going to do the quarter on this side as well. When you do the one-piece pan, it takes care of the frame rails, all this sheet metal here, uh, I believe the tailpiece, everything. Uh, not the tail panel itself up here, but all the sheet metal will be replaced. And that will take care of just about everything on the floor and make it a really solid car again. Now as far as the cowl, the owner did a good thing and he bought this. So that's an upper and lower complete cowl assembly made by Dynacorn. Really nice pieces. They fit together well. And uh, on some of my other videos, I showed how I did a um, the same panel on a 70 Mustang. This is a little bit different because the 70, the this this part of the 70 is a bolt in, just this section, not the whole thing. It still has an upper and lower, but the 60, the 70 is different. So 65 to 68 had this kind of assembly and um, I'm really happy he got that. Along with that we've got a variety of other pieces of sheet metal, some new leaf springs, lower valance, uh, filler panel between the bumper and the grill, there's a new tail panel, there's the original header panel for the headlights. These are two panels I won't be able to use because of the um, replacements that come with the floor pan. A couple of outer wheel houses and two full quarters. Now along with that we've got a variety of other pieces. That's the uh, original quarter uh, pieces that go by the rear seat. Um, there were some frame rails he brought with him but I can't use those because I'm going to do the whole frame. And then there's a variety of other pieces and parts over here. The headlight uh, or fender extensions, bumper brackets, battery tray, hood latch assembly, variety of bolts, hardware, and different things. Um, back here, got a gas tank. Uh, uh, there's some, a mirror. Um, just a variety of pieces. So, hopefully, very shortly, um, I've already ordered the floor pan, and uh, hopefully that gets on its way to me soon. And I'm going to start cutting and make this car much, much, much better. Maybe even better than it was when it was new. So looking forward to it and uh, stay tuned. Before I get too far along on this um, 65 Mustang floor pan, I wanted to show you the new floor pan. Now I picked this up from Mustangs Unlimited a couple days ago and it was crated and uh, I just want to show you how they come. It's got the steel box that runs the perimeter of the whole floor pan and uh, that's, that's pretty nice. Just that alone lets you know that they're doing a good job of putting it together um, just for shipping. But it comes on that, that steel box, and then it had a wooden crating on top of it. And this sat on top, and then around the perimeter was all these pieces right here. So it just boxed it in real nice. Now this is kind of heavy with the, you know, with this with this tubing and everything assembled. So obviously I loaded onto the trailer and I started on crating it. Um, it does come with these, I believe, are, your, are the uh, brackets for mounting your bumper in the rear. And um, everything else is in place, which is really nice. As you can see, there's the, 
there's the full cross member where the tranny goes of course the floor supports already installed um, seat risers already in place all the welds are you know your standard spot welds frame rails Let me back up here a little bit there you go so I'm really really happy with this um, let's just show you that there's the trunk pan extensions uh, and uh, of course where your gas tank goes but the last one of these I did I removed what this is basically the inner rocker panel um, when you look at the car you, know, you have the outer and you have the inner well the last one I did this was rather thin the metal was not real good and uh, it made it simpler to remove this piece drill out all the spot welds along the edge here where you know it would have mounted originally anyway for the floor for the floor pan and everything else so I have to debate right now whether I want to use these pieces and drill off the original uh, inner rockers or if I'm going to remove these pieces and use the originals um, I guess there's an advantage one way or the other but I, at this point I'm not really sure I'll just have to look at it a little more and make that decision I know it was uh, simpler to remove them from the other pan but again they were lighter gauge metal so I'll just have to make that decision when I get into it but I just wanted to show you this pan before I got started and uh, really nice and this is this is supplied through Dynacorn so you got to remember too when this is made they're building a whole car so that's why they built it pre-built it with those inners and uh, I also picked up a um, Dynacorn firewall which I'll show you in a little bit and we're going to do the whole deal onto this car it's going to be rock solid when it's done and there's the firewall that also came from Mustangs Unlimited and it's a product of Dynacorn and this is uh, coated in weld through primer as well so anything I need to do to it is ready to go and with that I wanted to show you more of this Mustang of course this is at 65 and I already showed you this top up here that was pretty scary looking <laughs> that's pretty scary looking however like I said I've got the new cowl to go in it and that's going to take care of all that stuff moving on as you see the floor is gone most of it I still have to get the hump out and the floor uh, support boxes right there but I went and bought a plasma cutter from Harbor Freight and within uh, maybe half an hour I cut out the whole back of this car now of course I'm gonna have to come back in and dress this all off you know we got a flange left here now and uh, depending on how I want to do these um, wheelhouses whether I use them or rebuild them or replace them I'll decide that a little later but I'll trim off these edges and that'll give me a location when I put the new floor up in place so good progress um, this little Harbor Freight plasma cutter <laughs> man I, as fast as I moved the wand or the lead however you want to label it it was cutting it I mean just right through it and it never hesitated never gave me any grief which is a good thing so I will continue on I'm going to cut out the, some of those sections up there as I remove the floor support boxes but everything else is looking pretty good so good progress I'm happy to see that floor out and uh, still got some you know detail work cleaning up these edges getting rid of this stuff but all in all I'm pretty excited really making a dent in this project I almost neglected to show you the pan that I cut out and you can see I just cut along the perimeter and uh, the complicated part was down here in this box because that's the main support for the rear frame rail so I had to you know cut away pieces to make my way into it and once I got in there just cut them off and 
beat it on with a hammer a little bit and it came right apart and there's the edge that I cut around the wheelhouse and I also zipped off the rest of the quarter panel up here and, I'll, and then did the same thing on this wheelhouse so I'm pretty excited I'm gonna get this thing back together it's gonna be looking good well as I'm making progress on this 65 Mustang and removing uh, the inner I decided to remove the inner rocker panels because they were rusted through and uh, I'm going to use the ones that came with the floor pan but I wanted to show you something that I find interesting I've already started cutting loose both the inners now I took a plasma cutter my plasma cutter and I cut just about an inch below the seam here that way when I ground through the welds I could chisel and not have to beat the thing apart and so I could chisel back against you know, the structure of the outer rocker but this is interesting to me because in the span from the corner of the door jam all the way to the back where the seat inner uh, rear seat would, would sit um, I counted 27 welds each one of these little black marks is where the welds are now when you're doing a collision job uh, by law you have to restore every one of the welds that's removed that way it's not too strong or too weak uh, from the original design so that's why I do this I indicate where the welds are so I can duplicate the pattern and put them back in now as I said you can kinda of see I wrote it there there's 27 welds on the right side Go over here and look at this here's the left side look at how close those welds are together all the way back into this area there are 38 welds on this uh, inner rocker just on the upper section on the driver's side that just shows you the difference in technology uh, today of course everything's done with a robot it's on a you know a jig and a pattern and it's programmed and it does all the work like it's supposed to but this shows you that in 1965 you had one guy doing one side and you had one guy doing the other side and they probably just didn't really even have an idea as to how many welds it was supposed to take so they just ballparked it and uh, just really surprised that there's a difference of 11 welds just in that short distance so I'm gonna probably duplicate uh, something along the lines of this side over here with the 38 uh, maybe not quite as extreme back here in this corner uh, one every what three eighths of an inch a little overkill on that but just remarkable to me that there's that much of a difference from side to side so stay tuned okay I think I'm ready to set this floor pan in place and start welding it and uh, I just want to show you a couple things I prepared the floor pan I drilled holes I remember I talked about how many uh, holes there were on each side and I think it was 28 and 39 or something but what I wanted to show you was I just picked up a, a two inch pattern which really mimics what was on the uh, passenger side and I drilled those all the way back on two inch centers I did the same thing on the other side you can kind of see them there and then I also looked at the, uh, the floor pan uh, the floor supports they were of course already installed on here but I took one of the original pieces and you can see the poor pattern they had um, there's really two rows of five so I simplified that and I measured from this front edge to back here on the existing and I'll show you that in a second the the main boxes up front I had eight and a half inches to work with from point A to point B so I just split the middle and then divided it up evenly so there's two rows of five two rows of five and two rows of five um, other than that the floor pan itself is ready to go from there I did a couple little things I had to trim off uh, some material that was left here on these this back seat support I went ahead and cut off the flange uh, where the wheelhouses are because I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and replace those rebuild them uh, later on but uh, a couple other things this is a perfect opportunity uh, you can see there's some rust that was uh, inside the outer rocker panel and this was a perfect opportunity to treat that rust 
and I also treated it in a variety of places uh, as I went along and took care of that did that on both sides and then I cleaned up the metal where these original welds were so that when I put the panel up in place it'll be ready to go and then I also cleaned up the edges on all these the bottom row um, other than that everything is cleaned up and ready to go back together um, I just need to get it in here and jack it up in place and as you can see the firewalls all cut out now you know I think it's kind of funny as I look back on this and think about how a lot of us get over concerned with having a certain tool or uh, product to help us do this job and here I was basically just using a floor jack some jack stands uh, a hoist or overhead you know cable hoist to lift the car or lower the car down into place and it really went very well and I was very happy with that you know currently I'm using a jig that I built just for the purpose of doing this sort of work but you can also see that you can do this with what I would consider basic tools everything was double checked and measured and fitted and as soon as I got it in I started welding things in place I wanted to make sure that it was locked down before I had any movement or anything like that and it all went very well you know this is uh, just just showing you that you can do it and hopefully some people get some uh, value out of this and can see that uh, they can do it in their home garage just like I did so and this is where all the preparation pays off the pan is up in place um, I did post a, a time-lapse video on my uh, page showing, me how, showing how I put it up I basically just slid it up underneath the car and then jacked it up into place um, it fit just right in fact there's I want to show you there's that measurement I had I measured from the front and on the end uh, previously when I was measuring out my holes eight and a half inches to the edge and of course I can come around to the front here and you can see that it lapped right into where the uh, uh, the original panel or original piece went so I still have to do some more welding but the main part of it is in place um, out here that wraparound corner came in right where it was supposed to go and uh, along with that everything up on the top here where the floor meets the inner rocker meets the outer rocker it's right back where it was so that all lined up and of course I've welded in place you know I took a bunch of clamps and clamped it in a um, couple little things I wanted to point out down here there is uh, a notch and this is on the new piece and if you look there's kind of a corner right here on the uh, on the outer rocker and that notch fits in that opening and that's exactly where it's supposed to be um, I'm not sure if there's yeah there's a notch there too line right up so everything's in place uh, the main upper section is welded and what I'm going to do now as you can see you can see daylight through these holes all that means is this rocker in the middle here is pretty close but back here is a little off and I'm going to jack that up put some pressure on it put it in place because that metal is going to want to straighten out naturally but it's supposed to be curved up a little more to, to finish out the shape um, I'll get that welded take care of that and then uh, a couple other things I'm gonna come in here and weld those seat points and you can see I, I had a situation before that's where a seat belt mounts uh, and all I'm gonna do is trim that hole open a little bit no big deal and weld those in place as far as everything else I did measurements and uh, the drop from the top here where the uh, channel is where the trunk is drop from here to here on both sides was within a sixteenth of an inch so I was real happy with that that uh, tells me it's good and square or a uh, good and square as far as the plane of the, the car um, there are a couple little anomalies over here this wheelhouse you can see because these had a um, flange that kind of rolls back in I should you know kind of goes back in like this and this one's gonna line up perfect this one is a little bit off but you know when these things were built they weren't necessarily dead center perfect anyway but I'll, I'll be able to take care of that when I get it, the new one put in
Um, the other things, uh, this this kit came with four uh, mounts for your bumper, and these are the 65 mount mounts. They're a little bit taller, and these are the later model. And I can show you that over here on the original, a little bit taller mount. So I'll put those in later on. Uh, at this point, I'm going to finish welding up the uh, rocker on the outer sections. And once that's all in place, then I'm going to tackle the cowl and um, get out the plasma cutter again and do some hacking. So it's looking good. It's looking a lot more like a Mustang again. Just needs some more metal on it. Okay, so you can tell by that video that I was filming again with that little camera. I was trying to hold it and point and give details. And I think I did a pretty good job at that time. Also filming time-lapse with my iPod. You know, I had limited technology at that point. And so it worked. It may not have been the clearest or the best, but it did the job and showed what I was trying to do. Now, I do plan to make more of these, take some of the older videos and put them in together. I think the next one I do will probably be with the cowl and details in that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to look back and see. Because even looking at my shop, you can see that there's a whole bunch of things that have changed internally. Back then, I didn't have heat or air. I didn't have full insulation in here. And so it was just a whole different environment. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you would, leave a comment and a thumbs up. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. Also, here's a quick update on the Mach 1 project. I do have the outer wheelhouse welded in. As I was welding in the mini tub, I ran out of welding gas somewhere up in that area. So I had to go back to my supplier and get a new bottle. And that's where we're at right now. But, uh, you know, things are coming along.